All right, let's share my screen. All right, you can all see the screen, right? I assume, I hope. All right, so let's get started. Okay, um, this is week three of um, IT140. And in week three, uh, we're gonna review, actually it's a review, the branching statement, if else statement. Why I say review is because we kind of um, talk about this in first lecture, right? We, we talk about the guest game, uh, lower and high game, right? And in there I said, this is a uh, very natural uh, language, like if in your everyday um, conversation, you use if something happened, then you do this, else do something else. So if else branches in Python, it really works like that, just that, right? So basically you can go through uh, these die books and look at the basics. So one thing I want to point out that uh, in if else statement, you need a um, tab or, um, so two things, right? Um, this is the pseudo code, right? So this is nothing, to do with Python syntax, but when you when it comes uh, when it comes to pseudo code, you you can do something like this. Um, for Python though, um, let's see. For Python, let's see. Um, you can see um, after the if statement, there is a colon, right? This is very important. Right? You cannot miss that, otherwise it will give you syntax error. And then immediately after that, all the lines that belong to that branch, you need a uh, space, right? A tab or for spaces. Um, so, so that's that's really important. Okay, um, and yeah, what else? Okay, um, if else and else if, um, I guess. Yeah. Um, let's see. So multiple branches, right? You can have multiple else if, else if until you have um, the last one's else. So these are um, the basic syntax for the else if, right? So this is an example. If you have um, number of years is one, you, you know, you print different things and, and, and whatnot and else. Now in Python 3.10, there is a new feature called the uh, uh, case statement, right? It's a switch statement, which is popular in C, C++ and Java, but until Python 3.10, they haven't introduced the case or switch statement yet. So switch statement, let's, let's Google it. Python 10, Python 3.10, uh, new feature and the switch statement. I can type, All right? So let's see. So basically the switch statement is like that, all right? So if you have, you know, that switch, it depends on the day and for different day, you will return a different statement, right? That's conventional if you are using older Python, right? Um, this is a function, okay? It's not the new feature. It's just that if you were implement this switch statement, this is before 3.10, but after that, you could do this thing, right? You can match a subject and then for different cadence, you can do some action. So this is, if you have a lot of if else statement, uh, this is, I think, superior than the much uh, if else. So here you can, do the same function, um, depends on week of the days, you can return a different strings. So you can um, match a day and case one, two, three, four, and you can do something else. Right? It's just like if they equal to one, if they go to, but this is easier. Uh, I think it's more clear this way, right? And then this is default case. As you know, in Python, the default, if you don't care, you use underscore to represent a variable or something to, to indicate that's a default one and return please enter that day, all right? So this is a new feature in 3.10, um, but if you're using old interpreter, this may not be available. So be, I think, I don't think Zybooks have the 3.10 yet. 
So you probably can't use this yet, but I just want to let you know this, uh, this is available. Okay, so in, just in case you have a lot of if else uh, statement, you may think about switch to that. Okay, um, in Python, okay, uh, let me go to man. Dot, that file, oops, where is the man? Dot pi. All right, so in Python, there's also another way to do if else statement, which is more succinct, right? You can say, Print, um, uh, I don't know, uh, case one. If, like, uh, let's get the user input, right? Um, uh, user uh, input is input, right? Um, then, case one, if user input is equal to one. Uh, equal to string one, else, sorry, else um, case two. Let's see if that works, All right, run. Uh, missing parentheses in call to print. Ah, yes, this is Python three. So you need a parenthesis as a function, um, run it. All right, so you get one and the case one, right? And run again, if you pipe two, it was a case two, right? Of course, if you run other than to like four, it's still case two. So basically this is like a if else statement in one line, okay? That comes in handy if you use that uh, in some kind of, in the future, we talk about this comprehension and this is more uh, useful for that. But just keep in mind this kind of syntax exists, right? And it's more natural to do it this way. Okay, so that's if else statement. Any question on that? Um, when you talk about if else, right, there is um, like, you know, a variable called Boolean variable that you need to think about. Really, basically, you're dealing with Boolean values, right? True or false, right? So, so here, in terms of the equality relational operators, when you are dealing with this kind of judgment, like equal or not equal, this is the operator you can do, pay attention to, right? And then it returns true or false, right? So let me give you some examples, some you know points I mean, you easily confuse. Let's say, um, let me ask you this. Um, Let's say a variable A is equal to 10. Uh, let's give a string uh, one and B also equal to one, okay? If I say A equal equal B, would that print true or false? True. Yes, it's true because these two content are the same. Now, uh, this is not a trick question. Um, what if I say A is B? It's also true. So what is the difference between A is and A equal equal, right? That's something um, is really confusing, right? Okay, so like I said, each variable in the memory has its ID or address, right? Let's take, the ID will identify the variable's identity. So if their ID are the same, that means, you know, they are identical, right? B is just the alias of A, okay? In this string case, because the Python is smart enough, because you know, A and B all points to the same string. So he don't want to waste time to uh, create the two identical copies in the memory. That's why they use um, the same um, address for both A and B. Now, um, let me give you another example, which is a list, right? Let's say A is now a list. Okay, let's do LA equal to, let's say one, two, three, four, five, okay? And LB equal to LA, okay? So now if I say LA equal equal LB, right? Is LA and B the same? What do you think?
True or false? You can type in the chat window if you don't want to speak. True or false? <laughs> Unless observe, wow, you're, you're, you're talking about quantum mechanics here. If there's no observer, the status of the Schrodinger's cat is, is not known. Is that what you want to say? <laughs> uh, it's true, all right? I, I like that answer though, uh, quantum, quantum computing. All right, it's not that, <laughs> just kidding. What about LA is LB? Oh, it's also true, you know? So sounds like LA and LB are the same, right? And it is, so because ID of LA is the same as ID of LB. Now keep that in mind, when you do equal assignment, it's not the content, but this like pointers that's being passed. So LA, LB are pointing to the same memory location. Now let's see LC equal to LA. Do you know what that is? Do you still remember? Let's print LC. Let's print LA. Let's print LC. You see, they're the same, right? So LA equal, equal to LC should, must be true, right? How about LA is LC? It's false. Okay. Now what happened? Quantum mechanics. <laughs> um, let's look at ID of LA, right? The ID of LA is 1400 whatever, right? And then ID of LB, oh, sorry, LC is different. So obviously when you do this, colon is copying the content of LA and assign it to LC and you have to create a new memory region for LC and store it. Although LA and LC content is the same, that's why equal equal is still true, but they are a different address, right? Just basically you have a two different hotel room with the same um, exactly layout, right? It's a replica of the other hotel room. However, there are two different hotels or hotel rooms, right? The address is, is different. So, so that's something hopefully uh, you keep in mind. When we talk about the functions later and you're pressing this uh, those variables as a parameter and there will be more tricky things when, when, when it comes to function scope. So you have to be very clear uh, what, what it is. But okay, so that's kind of minor things, um, but things that you may not be uh, very clear uh, from the die books. That's why I want to know the thing. Okay, so all the operations, uh, let's see. Um, basically branching is really, really simple, right? Um, so if you have a combination of and, or, not, those kinds of logic operations, uh, we call the Boolean operations, the Boolean logic, then you need to be aware of those, those values, right? A and B. Oh, okay. There is a question in the chat. Let's see. What is, okay. One of the chapters, something like, okay, what does input equal to true do? Okay, equal, equal, this, uh, yeah, okay. Right. So you have a quote in that, you know, true. So that's really a string instead of a Boolean, right? But it may not, it may be converted to a Boolean value. Ah, okay. So this is something tricky. I let me let me uh, repeat that question here. So, uh, you know, uh, someone asked a question: If yeah, like young is equal to um, input and equal equal to true, this is a Boolean value, okay? And and famous. is okay is equal to input okay equal equal to true all right so 
what is the value here, do you think? Let me just run it. Okay. Um, and let me print, just print young and famous. Right? When you have a doubt, ask Python to print out for you will be, right, let's just do one, All right? And then uh, let's skip, is that input something arbitrary? Like I'm just do A and B, so false and false. So A is not true. See, I, I have a typo here. A is not true and B is not true, right? So. I, my, ent my entered value string does not match this string true. So these are all false, okay? Then you can do combination. If young and famous, um, so young and famous is all true. So false and false is all false, right? You can print out false and false. Of course, you need to capitalize it. This is for Python. This is a Boolean, okay? And false, okay? This is a string, don't be confused, all right? And then uh, um, there's always a lottery. <laughs> okay, so let's, let's run it. Uh, uh, one, two. So yeah, false and false is false, all right? So basically when it comes to this, it's very simple. You just need to observe, there is a truth table here. Truth table means um, this is a two input. There's only four different input combination for two inputs, right? Uh, two false, two true. And so two times two is four different cases. And then only if A and B are all true, A and B are true. If one of them are false, then the whole evaluation is false. For the all operation, if one, one, uh, if one input is true, then the output is true. And for not, is this the opposite of each other, okay? There's also another um, operator called um, uh, exclusive all, means if they are the same, right? They will be zero. And if they are the different, they will be uh, one, okay? Exclusive all in Python, is like this, true, uh, true um, and false. Uh, wait, this is not the shell, yeah. True, true, exclusive, false, right? So if they are, they are different, then that's true. If I say true, exclusive, true, that's false. Or false, exclusive, or false, it's also false. And if it's false, exclusive or true, it's true. So if they are different, they will be true. If they are same, they will be false. That's exclusive all. Exclusive all is widely used in encryptions and cryptography. So basically um, there's a famous application. It's called a one-time one -time, one -time pad. So basically, if you think about input text as a, um, in lesson one, we talk about binary or right? lesson two. And all the text messages of information in computer are represented by what? By zero and ones, right? One, 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 zero, zero, one, right? These are binary form, right? Um, let's see, print. If you use a B here, and apostrophe, it will print this as is. Let me see. Okay. Uh, da, da, da. This is a binary string, right? That's a binary string. And uh, sorry, why I have binary should be no tools. Um, and uh, if I'm exclusive or uh, I don't know, um, zero, one, 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 that's too much. I'm just gonna be zero, one, zero, one, one, zero, one. Okay, 
zero one one zero one one zero one. Okay, let's do that. Okay, so there's error problem for Kusu bytes and bytes. So you cannot do that. Um, maybe just print this one. B. I don't know if, if I want to represent here. Uh, yeah, somebody may may tell me how to represent. Um, so this is a binary representation of, of bytes. But anyway, I think with the, the idea of one time pad, let's just show it in concept, right? So if we have a text like 011, 0111, right? And then you're gonna exclusive all 10011, something like that. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, zero, zero, one, zero, one, one, zero. Okay, so that's your text message, right? Clear, we call the clear text in, in cryptography, clear text, right? So it's a bunch of zero and ones. And then you have, a, you have a key or something secret key, private key, right? A one-time one -time key, right? Let me just do a, and then if you exclusive all this, right, what do you get? So let's see, if they are different, you get one. If they are different, you get one. If they are different, you get one, one, one. And if they are same, you get zero, zero, zero. Is that clear? You did exclusive all here, XOR, right? So now, if I use the same key, right? If, if the enemy gets your keys, okay? You get the same key. Now you have to protect your key like, you know, and then you do exclusive all again. Let's do, uh, what is this? Zero, right? And one and zero is one. One is one and zero and one. And this is like uh, one, one and zero. What do you find? you recovered that secret message. This is called after one encryption using the key, just called the encrypted message, okay? So when you are chatting with a friend and you get a, a you want to encrypt your message to nobody else, we call it, um, like usually we use Alice and Bob as a example, right? Alice wants to send a message to Bob and there is a Eve, like a evil in the middle she intercepted, intercepted the message, but she intercepted this clear, uh, not clear text, but encrypted message. But if he got also got the key and he can do exclusive all on it again, guess what? He or she recovered this original text message, 01101, right? So um, that's why it's called one time pad because you can only use the one time. Um, if you use the multiple time, um, you know, people may be able to guess what's your key by, you know, get collecting multiple uh, clear text message and encrypted text and do comparison and try different keys. Um, so, but in modern crypt, uh, cryptography uh, method, uh, this one-time key is not practical, meaning because to be able to, um, you know, send the, you know, same length of the text, you need the, the same length of the, uh, key to go with it, right? And if you can send that length, say the entire Shakespeare, uh, it's, it's a very big text message, right? If you want to encrypt the entire book, you need the whole length. So if you can send a, a, a key of a size of Shakespeare to the other, uh, you know, ways uh, safely, then why don't you just send the, the clear text, right? They use the same channel. So this is not practical, but this is an interesting way to do encryption. Okay, enough for some side topic, All right? So this is the logic. Um, and the, the, the precedence of these things, I guess it's, uh, it's basically, uh, let's see, uh, precedence. Order of evaluation. Um, if you have a parenthesis is higher order, of course, and this is just like a regular mathematical um, precedence, right? Operators. Okay, I think that's enough for for those introduction. And just so you know, how computer evaluate this expression? They actually build a tree. 
a tree, a binary tree, basically. Uh, so, so a tree, this is like a uh, inverted tree, right? On the top, there's a root node, and then each branch has a, a value or operator, okay? And all the way to the leaf. The, the bottom level, we call the leaf node of the tree. If you're taking a CS260 data structure, we'll talk about this more. This is a tree structure, right? So the way computers see this is they construct a tree to represent this thing. And he goes from the top bottom, sorry, the, the bottom left corner and, and walk all the way up to the top, which is the root of the tree or inverted tree, right? So first of all, he look at the operand X um, and one, right? And they add them together and then save the intermediate value. And then he goes to the right side of the tree and retrieves Y and Z and multiplies them together. And he compares it. After that, he goes to the right side of the tree and takes Z and three and compare it equal and save the value there. And then after that, he or them together. So or is the last step to evaluate. Okay, so that's the uh, tree in the computer to evaluate those things. You don't need to think like a computer, but that's what it is, or how you implement this in a compiler, right? And be careful about the parentheses. So not A equal to B um, is not necessarily what you meant, right? Um, so if you want to be clear, make sure you use actual parentheses, make it extra clear, otherwise you'll confuse yourself. Okay, so that's all for the if else statement. <coughs> let's, go, let's go to some <clears throat> practical cases, right? So in one of your labs, let's see how many labs you have this uh, in chapter three. You have smallest number season exact change. Let's look at this first. Write a program whose inputs are three integers and whose output is smallest of the three. I think that that's really simple, right? You just need to pay, pay attention to the input format. So it's basically like maybe three inputs, right? And then look for the smallest of the three. There's also a function, but don't use that uh, called the main function. It's like cheating, right? Main function will basically immediately uh, put you, um, so you can just uh, run this in one line, right? So basically, uh, you know, uh, if you have a list, you, ha you can print, the minimum of uh, a list of like one, three, and 24, right? And just run it and you will see, um, actually I left the, this is a function, so I left the parenthesis, isn't it? Okay, so here minimum and two parentheses, here you go. And then it will print the minimum. Where is the console? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because this name is not main anymore. Let me just uh, clear. Okay. All right, clear. So you want to do Python and lab 312.py and it will say minimum is one, right? If I change this to 100, minimum will be three. Uh, oh yeah, I need to remember I need to do that. Yeah, three, right? So I'm gonna print, this is a minimum. Okay, let's go back to next lab is season. So this is a very interesting one. Uh, let's go back to here. So write the program if you entered any uh, months and day and it will output. So you get given the months, April and 11, output is spring, right? Um, and you also need to check the input is valid or not, right? So this is a very common task. If you go to something other than uh, a month, a valid month or valid day, it will say invalid, okay? And it gives you those prerequisites, so knowledge basically. So how gonna uh, you approach with that? Let me just, oh, it's already there. Yeah. How are you gonna approach with that? Well, you already learned the if else statement, right? You naturally may think, okay, I'm gonna just say um, like, um, 
um, months, date is, uh, you cannot use the keyword date. A day, right, is equal to input, um, enter months and day, right? Dot split. So basically I'm gonna input everything. This may not be the way that they wanted. They wanted to run different lines. Okay, fine. I'm gonna just do two input, enter months. Okay, I'm gonna do two lines, right? And day is equal to input, enter day. All right, so now you're gonna have to uh, check if months and day is valid. So one of the things you can do, uh, you can say uh, I'm pre pre-populate the data structure, right? Valid months is equal to uh, as you give them a list of months, right? Um, January is what's the chain? February, March, April, etc. Right? Um, and then you can say, but, but then there is a problem, right? Once you have the each month, uh, for each month, the value of the day are different, right? There's, there's different days for the months. So you can, you can say, okay, value the day. You can have two lists, right? Yeah, so for, for January, okay, it's a string. Sorry, I need to make them a string. Right, something like that. There, of course, no da da da. It's just uh, I'm just you know give you uh, example here. You have to complete the whole thing. And value day maybe um, okay. So you need the two corresponding. Uh, um, so value day is a range, right? So maybe you have a list of range. Uh, I don't know, for January, what is that? Let's say March, right? March 20. So for March, it's 20 to 32. 20 to 32. Okay, 20 to 30, okay. 20 to 32, March. Because on March, there's 31 days, right? And remember in range, 32 is not included. So it's basically 20s, March 20th to March 31 is belong to March, uh, right? So you may change this to March because um, I'm skipping January and February, okay? So the first element in this list corresponding to the date range, and you can do so on the second one, list of range. So you're gonna put uh, maybe April, April is one to 31, right? because the whole month of April is in the spring, right? And, and so on and so forth. So now you have a corresponding um, month and day. So now you can validate by, so let's say if um, months, right? In valid month and day in valid day colon, don't forget the colon, do something, right? Clear? So basically you're validating, let's, let's do some common here. Validating, it's a good practice to have common user input, right? Else, if it's not, like, like the, the, you can print something like invalid, input or something, right? So user know, you can continue to print, you know, spring or whatever. So that's the structure. Of course, this is not the correct answer, but you get idea, right? Now, let me challenge you with something else. So can we do better? How do I know, um, because March, so otherwise you will have to check, okay, 
uh, March, say I give you March 21st. So you know it existed. Now, what are you gonna do with, uh, to associate with that, that season, right? So you have to check those boundaries. Like if the, if the um, um, how to say, you kind of convert, maybe you want to have a lookup table, convert the string March to, uh, I don't know how to, actually, I don't know how to do this though, so, right? You have to compare, okay, it's March, then you want to say if that, you know, date, um, so which, and you have to compare date, right? If the date is outside the range of 20 to 32, if it's inside the range, then you know it's spring, right? Because that's the range. But if it's outside, then, um, then I know it's not spring, but it's the um, it's it's within here, right? March nineteenth. So you need to give them a a range to uh, to check, right? So that's really hard, right? They have a lot of I can imagine you have a lot of if else statement, but it's okay because it's like this chapter's focus. What I want to tell you is that you haven't learned this yet, but you learn a dictionary, right? A dictionary. Do you remember dictionary? What is dictionary? A key value pair, right? Or hash, uh, a key value pair. Okay. A lookup table, whatever. Um, so can I put those into a dictionary, right? I don't like the fact that these months and day are separate. So I want to put this like March, I have this range. So let me have a dictionary called uh, valid dictionary is equal to, remember how to do a dictionary, it's curly braces. And then you have a key like March, right? That's your key, colon. And the value is list of range 20 to 32, okay? So that's one value, all right, um, comma. And then April, April, you have a list of range uh, of one to 31. So the entire month of April is spring. And I think that's, no, you have May as well. And you have June, wow. So let's do that. May is that and June is this, right? Uh, let's see. Did I miss anything? List of range. You need a break. This one here. And then May is list of range 32 and June is the list of, um, what is June? A list of range one. June is 30. I'm sorry? Uh, 30 days in June, if that's the question. Oh, question. There's a question here. Not fully understanding what list uh, range two is doing here. Okay, that's a good question. So you know what the range is doing, right? If I, let's just try it. Range of uh, 20 to 32 will give you a generate, it will generate a list, uh, uh, generate a list of numbers, right? But it's object. You want to convert that to a list to be fully, um, so basically it generates a list of numbers that range from 20 to 32. Is that clear? So first of all, range function will give you, remember we have in the for loops uh, section, chapter two, uh, we talk about the range, right? It will generate a number from 22, from 20 all the way to 31, not including 32. But that will give you one number at a time. To convert them all at, all, uh, at once to a list, you want to convert to a list function. So the list is a function that convert the range object into a list of numbers. 
But for you, uh, we are learning that more. But for now, just understand list of range will give you a list uh, just like, like that. Just as if you type in, you can type in 20, 21, 22, 31, but I'm too lazy to do that, right? Uh, so I use this to generate them for me, for like computer generate for me. So basically it's equivalent to typing in literally this 20, 21, all the way to 31, okay? So that's a list. So basically the dictionary has a key of a string of months and the value of a list of dates. So now you have that, you can compare stuff. Let me close my brackets, right? So I, I don't need this valid day. So question, with valid, uh, valid months are valid unnecessary? Yes, it's not necessary anymore. So I'm just gonna close it, right? Because I use one dictionary, I'm associating those months with the date. Same here, same here, same here, okay? So now I can, I'm gonna have to change this ver uh, verbiage because now I have a dictionary. How do I access the keys only and values only in a dictionary, right? Very cool, yes, indeed. Dictionary is actually really cool. I, there, since there are more things here. So how to, how to access them? Well, you have to learn about the four loops. So you really, uh, after you learn about the four loops, you will be able to iterate through those key value pairs in dictionary. For now, for now, you just remember to iterate through, you just say four key comma value, that's a tuple, right? In valid dick dot items, there's a function that will give you a list of key value pair. I'm gonna print it out, key comma value, right? I'm gonna um, comment out this because it's not uh, yet ready yet, right? So let's look at what's inside this one, right? Okay, uh, monster day. I don't even need to uh, enter the input. I just want to, ah, I just want to look at what dictionary is, right? So this is a way to practice dictionary. Okay, uh, let me do that T. So let's say Python lab 312.py. All right, so you can see it actually prints out all the key value as, as we walk through it. So March is a key and the value is a list of dates. April is a key and the value is you know, one to 30. May is a key and the value is one to 31. June is a key, the value is one to 20. And all these key value pair belong to the season spring. Okay, so now you know how to iterate through this key value pairs, right? Now, of course, this key K and V is just a shorthand for key value. You, you feel free to just spell. It out. doesn't matter. It's just a variable that you assign, but you have to be consistent. Consistent, right? It's the same thing. So now you know how to print this out. You should be able to validate this. If months in, what is valid months? Months in key, right? So the keys. Um, let's see. For each key, right? I can, I can, I can search. So basically, you're doing the searching now. You, you know, rather than print, you, you. Every time you look at the key and the value, you will look at. If my mouse is, is in this key, right? And if, if it is, and if my day is in, now, if you have the key, so if the month is the key and what's a day? A day is say, if you search March, right? Now you get the date at 2231, it's a list. And the, your day better within it, right? You can say day in um, key, um, and square brackets, um, 
months, right? Because you already know this month is one of the key in that in that value. So months represent March, right? If if my month day, let me just right. And if that's the case, that you means you find you find a valid input. Is that clear? Right. So you you look you look, loop through the dictionary for each key value pair. You first look at uh, if key in key, right? If for each key, if months is the key, and then then you find it, right? You you, you found it. Then you can you can break early. Break early means you don't need to keep searching because it costs time, computer cycles. You just break it and you find it. And then I can say if found. If found, well, let's get define a variable called found is false. So it's a variable, it's Boolean. Say I haven't found uh, the value input yet, right? Now I found it. Right. I can say found is equal to true. So now in this for loop, I don't need, I don't even need to print because I already know how it looks like, right? This is for a debugging. So if months in key and day in key months, right? How to, how to access the value of the dictionary? You use the key or sorry, the key and, um, and, and this square brackets, instead of the numbers indexes, they, they're indexed by, by the, uh, sorry, not key months. Sorry, this is wrong. It's the valid, uh, yeah, valid dick and key. So the key is your index, right? According to the index, you get the value. Okay. This is what, what, what um, that's a dictionary name and the key. So this is how to access the value, right? But you don't even need to do that. You can say day in value because value is already the values list for that key. If that key matches the month and the value has to be, uh, the day has to be one of the values. The value is actually each list of numbers, okay? So that's the simple way to do it. The value is actually equivalent to the valid dick dot get key, okay, get key. Now get key is equivalent to valid uh, dick dot uh, key, right? These are equivalent. The good thing about get method is if the key does not exist, you will get a key error if you access the non-existent key. But here you don't get a key error, you just get a none. And you can also specify a default value for that. If you don't have the key, you return none or zero, right, or empty string. So this way is safer because that can allow you to get the keys that are not existing in the dictionary. More on dictionary on chapter five, by the way. Okay, with different uh, valid months, unnecessary, yeah, it, it, this is the same question. All right, so now um, in this loop, I'm looking at each key value and look at months within the day, within the key and the day within the value. Actually, to make it this, because I know the key is the months, right? Uh, valid months and valid, um, I can name it more valid day, valid months. Okay. And then for months in valid months. You see what I'm doing? I'm just to make this variable more meaningful, right? Valid, which is a good practice. Once you understand what this thing is, it's basically key values. This is a key and this is a value, right? And then you can, you can do something about it. You found it. And if it's found, then you can keep, you, you pass the check, right? You are checking around 30 numbers. Isn't this less than just a zero? Oh, value, ah, okay. 
that's a very, very good question. Then just the zero uh, value is greater than zero and 31. Yes, you're right. Because when you do, so the question is, if you check zero less than value, less than 30, which one has more efficiency, right? Yes, value, if you compare just the value um, to, to the uh, I mean day, right? Of course, your method is more efficient, but you have to, um, but you have to know, <clears throat> you have to know the boundary for each, each month because the boundary is different with different months, right? So you have to write, uh, different if statement for each month, isn't it? And that's a more uh, code in Python. Now you may argue, okay, which one is more efficient? I, I, it's like you want to spend more time in coding or spend less time in running the program. That depends on your application, <clears throat> okay? I would argue that for constant value, like, you know, it's only 30 numbers. It's really, computer are very fast, right? For 30 numbers, it's not like a million numbers, right? then your, your method is more significant. But two numbers versus 30, I would argue this doesn't really um, you know, make a huge difference. Could you not just drop extra numbers in the dictionary when they keep the largest, like 29, 30, and 31? That's also, well, the starting months may not be one, right? Because like here to determine uh, the spring, you sometimes your starting is 20 is not one. So you need both the starting and ending. Actually, that gave me a good idea. I think I like that your idea is that we don't necessarily, because these are continuous, right? One to 30. Remember, this is like range. So what I got is not necessarily efficient. And I like your idea. And I think, who, who said that? Rachel, right? It's a very good idea. So to make it more efficient, I would spend, I would just store the beginning and ending values. I can make it a tuple. Let's say 20 to 31, thank you. And then this is, instead of a range, I don't need a list anymore, right? Just the 130. You see what I'm doing? Ah. I love doing those kind of lecture when students are responding with different ideas. I like your idea, Rachel. You see what I'm doing? I'm actually, oh, actually. So instead of a key value or the value of the list, I only need to get the tuple, which only have two numbers, like the beginning and the end, beginning and the end, right? Because really now what I'm, so do you see what I'm doing? So now I don't need to like check if that day is in one of the valid days. I can say, like you said, uh, valid days is a tuple now, right? 20 and that's zero less than day and less than, well, is that less or equal? Less or equal, right? Because that day is inclusive valid days one, right? Because you know it's only two numbers, beginning and ending, because they're continuous. Very good. Yeah, only keep the, the smallest and largest, the two ends. Love it. This is awesome. This is awesome. Yeah, and you are right. This is more, it's better, you know. You say you save uh, twenty nine data lookup, right? Now, of course, I'm telling you because this is sorted. So actually, looking a number in a sorted list is kind of more faster than linear search. They will probably use something called binary search, which is a log of n order of mechanism. Which you know what a binary search is, right? You go to the middle, like fifteen. And if your search number is less than 15, it goes to the middle again on the lepper, uh, uh, lower half. And if it's above 15, it goes to the middle of the upper half. Every time you search it, you throw half away. 
So it's like a guessing game. Uh, you will quickly identify. So log n is much, much smaller. So in, at the end of the day, this will save this little, maybe one or two uh, CPU cycles. But yeah, remember in the dictionary, the value can be anything. It can be a string, a number, a list, a tuple, a, a list, a tuple, and a dictionary even. So you may have a, every picosecond. <laughs> I love it, I love it. Oh, you guys are really, uh, uh, yeah. Good, good, I love it. So, um, so yeah, see we change the dictionary to a list, uh, dictionary of string to a tuple. Now, the reason I use tuple is because I don't need to change it, right? So, um, and I save a lot of memory too. See, the memory and speed, we are optimizing this thing. Okay, so now you, you can do this. Now for the months, because it's only like 12 months. So, hey, that works, that valid months, which is the key. And you can find it. This is a typical way to find it. And then if found, you can do something. And if not, you can say invalid input. Let's run it and see if that works. I'm hoping. So enter months, let's say March, M-A-R-C-H, enter day like 21st. And it says, uh, let's equal not support between instance of int and string. Aha, there's another typical, uh, so day is a string, right? You need to convert that to a integer. So I can do it here, right, int. I convert that to integer, remember? Now let's run it. Ah, no, I have to do it here. Sorry. Wow, I love it. Oh, clear. Python, but lab three dot twelve dot pi. Enter month March, and then day is twenty first. It's a spring. Now, of course, I always print spring, right? You have to. Do something to name it spring because there's spring summer. Okay, now I'm telling you another trick. So I need to encode this spring into this data structure so I can know what that is. So I'm gonna create because <clears throat> all these are belong to spring, right? Now you can there's multiple ways. One thing you can say spring. And then you can do this for summer, autumn, winter. And then you check this four times. And then every, and, and depends on which category, uh, which subset you find it, you will know it belongs to spring or summer or autumn or winter. Or better yet, you can have a dictionary of dictionaries, right? Wrap your head around. So I have like a dictionary of spring, colon, this whole thing is my value. So now I have a new dictionary, okay, of spring, right? Let me just copy and paste for time's sake. I'm gonna copy this, let's say summer. And uh, autumn. And then winter, okay? So now you see I included all everything into a, a dictionary of dictionaries. Okay, I need a, I need a uh, quote because this is a string, right? Okay, let me look at the comment later. Let's see what funny comment that you have. <laughs> Did I say anything messed me up? Has lecture been going on for an hour? Yes. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Don't worry, don't worry. Uh, we'll have uh, everything recorded. So you will see this lecture, but you're not missing a lot. I mean, like uh, we are talking about this lab here. Yes, Arizona, well, how to say, we are the few states that don't observe the DST and everybody else does. So when I moved to Arizona, I think, oh, it's great. We don't need to adjust the time. But no, everybody else is just time. So I have 
you know, you know, we have to accommodate all the meeting times. So it's all relative. And yes, for some obscure um, um, Native American, uh, Native Indians uh, reservation, they observe a different time zone. <laughs> Yeah, sorry about that. I need to, uh, I didn't know. Um, but yeah, always look at Arizona time. It's uh, daylight saving or whatever. Uh, okay, so we talk about dictionary of dictionaries, right? So now what? Well, of course, this has to be changed, but I'm too lazy. I don't want to change this. Do I need to change it? No, I don't like to change it. Uh, maybe I will do one for summer, okay? Then you guys do the rest, right? You need to do something, come on, right? I can't just give out all the answers, you know, plus I don't even know, know the answer before the lecture anyway. So it was summer, June, so what's happening? I need that is. Oh no, you know, uh, this is one of the things I need to change this to tuple. Thanks for Rachel. We optimize our code, right? And we don't need, now, by the way, this kind of, expression is actually valid in Python, which is awesome, right? None of the other languages like C, C++, or Java will allow you to do that, but Python will allow you to do that. So it's kind of awesome. So that's, that's just like math, right? So you don't need to relearn. Uh, yes, you don't need a list of range. You just need the starting and begin and, and end, okay? Let's do that and that. All right, okay, okay, okay. All right, uh, is that, is that it? Okay, yeah, that sounds like it, right? So autumn and winter, I don't need that, right? We only, only do spring and summer, right? That's the that's favorite season, right? In autumn, winter, we just hibernate. Okay, um, so now you have a, uh, uh, dictionary of dictionary. Why I'm spending a lot of time um, on this uh, dictionary of dictionaries? There's a reason for it because you're gonna use this architecture to to your uh, game design, right? The project, which the key things about the data structure project is the dictionary of dictionary. You have different rooms, you have different items, you have different directions, and this is very similar to that project. So I'm gonna spend a lot of time on this dictionary of dictionary things. So now you have a dictionary of dictionaries. So now your new key is the season, right? The value will be the dictionary. How are you gonna accommodate that? All right, so let's say season is initially, the answer is empty. I don't know what season is, right? So now the new key is called a season a key in, actually, so I want to change the name of the dictionary, sorry, seasons, okay, seasons. So for key in seasons, is that right? Yes, so for key, in the key is the season. So I may change this for season. S E A S O N. So now every time I look through the keys are season, uh, the four different values. And then I'm going to say uh, data instead of value is the season key. Uh, season. All right. So basically, I got the data which is the March, blah, blah, blah. This one, we already know that, right? Oh, we can just say valid, valid dick. All right. So now we are going back to the valid dictionary that we just talked about. The valid dictionary now is a value for each season, right? So we already know how to do that. We just need to get this from the top dictionary, season, season. Right. Um, let me let me look at let me say answer. 
is empty. So answer, which is what's the season, right? Answer equal to um, the season. So for every season in the dictionary, okay, I'm assigning that to an answer. And then, And then I can say um, if months, right? Months is in the valid dictionary, which is the key. Okay. In valid dictionary, the key is the months, right? The key is the months. So months in valid dictionary, you can say dot keys. But if you omit that, it will you know, be default to, to uh to the keys. If month in registry and and um, the day, okay, um, I can copy this to that, right? This is what we discovered, an efficient way. Oh, come on, I can't paste. Valid days, valid days. Oh, valid days is the key value, right? Um, so valid days is the value, but to get the value, we can say valid dict of the key months, right? And valid dict the month. Okay, so if that's the case, right? And let me just uh, found, yeah, found. So I found it. Now I can break, right? So I don't need to keep searching. So, and then I can just delete that. Now if found, print, okay. Uh, print answer, because that's the answer, right? Because answer is already pointing to this season. If I found it, the answer already belonged to the correct season. So otherwise, in very input. All right, so let's run it. Okay, hopefully. Enter months. Uh, let's say March and 21. Oh, there is a error. Yeah, let's see not supported between in some two point in. Okay, so. Um, day, what is day? Uh, let's say verdict month, sorry. I'm missing a zero, right? And one, I can click do minus one. Minus one is the same as the second because there's only two. So let's run again. Hopefully this time is clear. Ah, uh, March and 21. Yes, it's spring. Now don't be too, um, let me just make this beautiful, right? No, detail matters. Okay, so let's let's try another case. Uh, let's say June 21st. Hey, it's a still spring. So there's something wrong, something wrong here. Something wrong here. Uh, why is that? Anybody can tell. I have no idea. So yes, you have June 21 twice. Let's see, very good thing, yes. That's right. Let's see, June 20th, 30. There is no 32 in May, come on. 31, 31, 21. Very good, yes, very keen observation. Thank you, Mike, in spring and summer. So. Uh, it will, of course, go to the spring, right? Uh, so let's try it again. See, we find the bug. This is a good test test case, right? We'll talk about the debugging in the lecture. So let's say June 22nd. It's summer, hey! Now, if I entered some invalid key, right? Like uh, blue 21, it was invalid input, all right? So that give you some idea. How many if statement I have? Just this two, right? 
and this this one. So three, that's a very manageable amount. And this uh, dictionary dictionary uh, data structure really save you a lot of space, isn't it? So yeah, take a look at this uh, proposal, right? If you understand this, congratulations. If not, don't worry. We'll talk about it again in chapter five after the full loop. So it's very advanced for you if you haven't learned this before, but how to iterate through the dictionary and uh, how to grab the key values is a essential skill that you need to own. A lot of that, of course it's okay, right? Because you are only starting to do like if else, I'm just giving you a different way and, and it won't let you to write a beautiful Python code, right? Oh, more efficient like uh, Rachel just uh, suggested, instead of using the whole list, we just need to grab the beginning and later. Ah, no, 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 no. It's, it's okay, right? As long as functioning, um, computer actually don't, don't care. And uh, okay, so much for the, let's see, what time is it? Oh, are we on time? I think we are. So let's quickly go through this 3.13 though. Um, so exact change, right? So I kind of, you know, give you like homework in chapter one, right? In the first lecture as like Python, uh, you know, uh, introduction. So um, what is the idea behind this? Right? You already read this. I want to emphasize uh, like the, the key algorithm and data structure here, right? So I, you have a uh, amount, right? Amount is like you have to convert to integer like input um i'm very i'm yes? very sorry i don't i don't mean to um interrupt but uh we did have a question that you uh, missed earlier on and it was um found like what was found doing in your previous code ah great question found is a boolean value to indicate that if i found the valid uh, months and day combination according to my dictionary, right? So this is a common techniques. Like if you go to the loop and if you already found it, you don't need to necessarily uh, continue and get out of the loop. However, outside the loop, how do you know that you completed the loop and didn't find anything or you find something you break early, right? You kind of rely on this variable to tell you, okay, in the loop, I found something so you can continue uh, with the answer and otherwise we will say invalid input. So this two statement depends on the found, which is defined here and used uh, updated here. If there's no update, guess what? Nothing has been found. You only update this variable when you find something. Is that clear? Okay, so if you don't put that found in, it'll just continue checking the entire dictionary? No, the break will, will break early, right? It will prevent you. Um, so if you without the found, it will also uh, quit early. However, how do you know that you're outside loop because you stop early or because you go through the entire dictionary and didn't find anything, right? There's, you need, you need, you know, you need to give the outsiders some kind of indication that you find a value, right? Otherwise you break and then there's nothing, not, no state change that's uh, other than the answer is here, right? Um, but you need something to tell the outsider uh, for the for loop that you found something. Now, of course in Python, this is a common, common technique for other languages, but in Python there's another way. You can use else statement, that's more advanced. The else statement indicate that if you go through the for loop without break, then you didn't find anything, right? Then you can print error, right? So basically you say you didn't find anything. Otherwise it's early break, then you can do something as if it's uh, found. But let's don't use that uh, feature just, just for Python, right? This is a typical technique for other language as well, right? It goes through this for loop, is that clear? So you basically it's just a indication that are you, you know, get out of the loop because you didn't find anything or because, you know, you find something and get early, get out early. All right. 
So that's just a common term technique. All right. Um, if you still don't know, let me know and we can talk more. Um, but there's this amount, right? And uh, how you gonna get the, um, the uh, change? What's the core um, algorithm? Yes, integer division and modular. So basically, um, um, change is equal to the amount, right? Integer div amount integer division by the face value. Like if it's a quarter, twenty-five, right? If it's a dollar, a hundred, right? 100 cents, okay? So depends on the value, right? And then well, once you change uh, this uh, number of coins, right? And then you can say, uh, you have to uh, subtract that amount, uh, modular 25. Modular 25 is like, how many 25 can you divide, right? Uh, what's the, what's the, oh, sorry, mm, not that. Um, what's the meaning of, of modular? Why are you doing modular, right? Say amount is 100, right? Then the entire, you have four, four quarters, but then there's no, nothing reminder, no reminder left. That means there's zero other coins, right? If it's 101, then the reminder is like one cent. So that's what it means, right? So, so this one will, reminder will give you Reminder gives you the rest of the coins not divisible by this face value of the coin, right? So whatever remind, rem, remainder is, is in cents, and then you can continue to, to check with other smaller coins. So the key is check from the largest value to the smallest, right? From dollar to the penny. And then you can do this like many times. Now this is okay, but you can see another repeated pattern here, right? Every time you have to subtract the amount, right? And then keep, you know, doing this division and modular, which is fine here. Can we use dictionary? I like dictionary, okay? So let's quickly use dictionary to, uh, to up the game. So let me, in lieu of time, I'm just gonna give you the dictionary. So exchange has dollars, 100, quarters, 25. You got it, right? So that's the dictionary we're dealing with. And I'm gonna still get a user input. And let's say the number of points is a dictionary, right? I want to save it. So. Now, how to iterate the dictionary? In chapter five, you know, key value in, you now know it. Exchange is the dictionary name dot items. Okay, you are learning chapter five. And then um, if not, I will explain later. So, It's the same thing as this, right? So none is the answer in uh, like coin and value, right? So basically for dollars, how many dollars are there? For quarters, how many quarters? It's a different than exchange dictionary. Okay? And then um, if not, so like I said, the none dictionary is empty. So when you get the key, it's the same key here. It may be empty. We haven't put things in it yet. So if you know, if you get this, um, if it's not, that means that means it's not empty, right? If it's empty, you cannot use this K because if there's no key yet, you will get a key error. So you have to use a get method, right? If you get method, if if there's no key yet initially, they will get return a none. And not none is true. So now you can add this to the dictionary, right? So this time you can add this to the dictionary. That's okay. You can add to a new key. Once you do this, 
the key will be created and value is amount divided by the division by the V. V is the value, which is the hundred, right? So by doing this, I'm gonna change it to V for 125 10. I can add more, uh, you know, exchange rate in like different countries here and my code is still valid, right? And then amount is equal to amount modular B. So it's the same algorithm. It's just that I'm, I'm dealing with the different uh, um, values. Okay, now after that, I'm gonna use this new dictionary, right? Again, this is my answer. I'm gonna say if num k is greater than zero, because if there's no coins, I'm gonna pr not print out, print v comma k. So v is the, um, what is the v? v is the number of coins and k is the key. Key is what, key is that. So how many dollars, how many nickels? If, if the key is, if the value is missing, actually just a V, right? Greater than zero, I'm gonna print out. All right, so let's run it. So Python lab 313.py and the total amount like at 20, 124. So it's $1, one dime and four pennies, okay? See, I have only one if statement. Generally speaking, you don't want a lot of nested if statement, but you know, um, using all the data structure to your advantage, all right? Any questions? So I, I kind of showed you this answers to, uh, well, you have to clean up all these uh, details, but that's the basic idea. Now it's totally fine if you're just using this like four times, right? Dollar five times, but you know, if you can, you know, whenever there's a repeated pattern, you must think a way to uh, shorten it. And uh, later we'll talk about functions. Function is a bunch of code that can be reused with different parameters. So uh, this may be a very good candidate to refactor into a function later. Okay, so I think that that's pretty much for this lecture. Any questions? Uh, yes, so um, I've already like submitted all my labs, but I did have a question. Uh, is there any way I could like get uh, text copies of uh, what we went over so I can play around with it? Um, yeah, sure. Let me give you the link. So now you can, you can, you can copy it. Um, here, that's labs 13 and I promise I won't change it, but uh, I don't want to promise later it may be changed. So get it when they, when you can. All right. So these are two, uh, things I just, uh, I just, uh, posted. Yeah, you can also update your labs because uh, it's still time, right? You can update it many times. But yeah, think about this way, right? This will pave the way for your <laughs> game. All righty. I think that's so much for it. Thank you very much. I will see you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>